to Wednesday night family Bible study. We are continuing our study. This should be the last lesson, and at least all that I've planned at this time, on biblical praying. We're in biblical praying part four, a pathway to God's power. A pathway to God's power. Uh, uh, Brother, Brother DeVille, why don't you pray for us? Get us started out. Amen and amen. We're going to start out in Acts, the first chapter tonight. Acts chapter 1, verses 8 through 14. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 through 14. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things... Uh, while they beheld, he was taking up, taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him Go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where, both, uh, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Praise God. They continued in prayer. They did exactly what Jesus asked them to do, returned to Jerusalem, and waited for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Praise God. At the time of Jesus' ministry, the Jews had it better than in any previous age. <clears throat> Praise God. It was the Pharisees' golden age. They were at the height of their religion. They were at the height of, of uh, Phariseeism. Yet this golden age crucified Christ. Never had there been more praying in the nation of Israel than at any time, than right then. Yet there had never been less effective prayer than what was going on in the nation at that time. At the time of Jesus' ministry, there had never been more sacrifices and yet never more meaningless sacrifices because it had all become just ritual. Just take the animal and if you don't even have one, go. they'll sell you one when you get there. It was all ritual. Never had there been more temple worship, yet there had never been less God worship. They weren't worshiping the one true God the way He wanted them to. There had never been more lip service to God and yet less heart service to God. And at that time, that God was worshipped with the lips whose hearts and hands crucified the long-awaited Messiah. Never had there been more churchgoers, but never had there been less saints of God. <laughs> A holy people is formed by the power of genuine prayer. Real prayer. People, people know when you pray. Uh, I mean, we... we Music. I, I'm thinking of an instance that happened several years ago. Uh, uh, brother, brother Timothy Spell uh, was, uh, and his sons were singing uh, at a uh, at a graduation ceremony. We had been invited. We went to it. Probably 150 people, maybe, were there. Uh, there were only two families that I recognized as apostolic, and uh, of course, we knew Brother Spell and. He got up there and they sang the Our Father 
a cappella. I don't know if you've ever heard Brother Spell sing the Our Father a cappella. And, and his sons, they sang as a chorale. And, and it, it, it was incredible. It was incredible. The Holy Ghost was in that place. I mean, it was incredible. And uh, uh, we, kept, we knew the other apostolic couple. We kept looking at them. They kept looking at us. We wanted to lift our hands. I mean, it was thick. People were feeling something. And, 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 but they didn't know what it was. And so when Brother Spell and his sons finished the song, uh, the crowd leapt to their feet and began clapping you know, for the, the performance. But they didn't know how to respond to the Holy Ghost. We, we know when the real Holy Ghost shows up. And, and the world knows when the real Spirit of God shows up. And so if, when we try to pass off a little prayer as real prayer, everybody knows it. Praise God. But yet we are known for praying for people. Why? Because we know how to get a hold of God. Praise God. We know how to get a hold of God. Praise God. E.M. Bounds wrote a book on prayer, several books on prayer, and he wrote this. Two of the evils of this day are little or no praying. Little praying is worse, as it is a kind of make-believe, a salve for the conscience. But in reality, it is a farce, and it is a delusion. Little prayer. My goodness. Hey, look, the Holy Ghost flows through men and women, not any other thing. Prayer brought men and women to a place where they could access the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why I read Acts chapter 1 uh, this evening. The power of God surging through men and women for the purpose of making a difference in a lost and dying world. Not to be kept within us and live our life and us for and no more. Praise God. I, well, I, I, I'm not talking about the empty chairs in this room this morning. I'm talking about what the Lord has asked us to do. The sower went out to sow. We're talking to God about men and women and children who are lost. We need to be doing that. My eyes are... I try not to look at the results. I try to look at what my job, my duty is... The Lord's called us to sow, and the Lord's called us to reap at the right time. Uh, amen. And, 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 and those are the things. I have to be concerned about the work. I can't be concerned about the numbers. Amen. Praise God. The power of God that makes a difference in the world came to us because we were praying and asking God for His Spirit in us. Praise the Lord. Prayer is a pathway to God's power. If you say, I feel powerless, take a look at your prayer life. If you say, there's much power in me, take a look at your prayer life. Praise God. That's all it point, can point to. Well, I, I just don't know how to get God's attention. I'll tell you how to get God's attention. Give Him yours. You give God attention, He's going to give attention back to you. Amen. Here in Matthew, uh, uh, we're, we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is beginning to close out the Sermon on the Mount and He begins to discuss prayer with them. Jesus discusses how to pray and then at verse 9, He begins to provide the listeners what to pray for. Amen. In, in Luke chapter 6, we see where Jesus' disciples ask them, teach us to pray. Some commentators believe that this this. Uh, uh, teaching at the Mount of Olives and Matthew chapter 6 and Jesus talking about prayer is different than in Luke chapter 11 where they ask the Lord to teach him to pray. But they, they coincide very, 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 uh, uh, very clearly. We're going to look at Matthew 6, 9 through 13, verse by verse, but I want you to notice in these, uh, in these verses there are seven petitions. When we get there, seven petitions of which only one has to do with what we call things. 
Give us our daily bread. Every other petition, all six other petitions, deal with our spiritual life and our relationship with God. That's why I call prayer, a, 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 a biblical praying, a lifetime of prayer. A lifestyle of prayer. I, we have to be ready to pray 24-7. 24-7. Praise God. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And I'm going to chop it up a little bit, try to take it a little bit at a time. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye. After this manner. You see, these verses were meant to be a guide telling us what to pray for. This was never intended to be a prayer to be repeated. In fact, in the previous verse in chapter 6, uh, uh, verse 7, it says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions. Jesus wasn't saying this is the prayer that you say, but these are the topics that you should pray for. The disciples wanted to know how to pray. Uh, 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 Jesus had already told them, you know, pray in your closet. Don't, don't, don't pray uh, to be seen of other men, etc., etc., etc. And then he says, this is what you're going to pray for. So after this manner, pray ye. The rest of verse 9, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, uh, Lord in heaven, let your name be kept sacred and holy. That's the first petition. Hallowed be thy name. Let your name remain sacred. Let your name remain holy. There is At this time, uh, uh, the Lord is teaching them the first topic you need to address is thanksgiving and worship to God. Praise the Lord. We, we, and that's scriptural. The psalmist said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The Lord is just reiterating that. Amen. Then in verse 10, thy kingdom come. Look, the very first thing the Lord says to pray for is the coming of the kingdom of God. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. How long has it been since we prayed let your kingdom come. Oh, I think we're getting a hold of it right now in this environment. We're starting to say, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We should have been praying for the kingdom of God a long time ago. Thy kingdom come. We already know that the first phase of this petition has already taken place. Jesus came as a babe, was dead, dead, uh, crucified, buried, and resurrected. The first phase is complete. And we are to pray now that God, to prepare ourselves for God to use us as He establishes and grows His kingdom. Every soul that is one is building the kingdom of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 3, verse 6. But seek ye first. Hello? What is it? But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. That's what we are to be praying about. The kingdom of God. Now we pray for souls. More recently we've been praying, Lord, come and receive your bride. We're ready to go. But the Lord's not through here. There's still more souls to be saved. And we're also praying, Lord, uh, we're praying for the return of the Lord uh, for the judgment of the world. Thy kingdom come. We need to pray that. Praise God. The rest of verse 10, Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. It didn't move. Look at that. First phase complete. Pray for paracels. Pray for souls. Pray for the Lord to receive his bride and the Lord's return. Sorry about that. The rest of 10. Thy will be done. Everybody say, in earth. In earth, in earth as it is in heaven. Boing, boing, boing. In earth. In, you know who that is? That's us. That's right. That's us. We are asking uh, that thy will means God's will, God's plan, God's purpose in earth, in you. We, we are asking God to help us to align our will with His will. And what, uh, there's so many programs, uh, Microsoft, you know, Word, and when they get a new 
you, sometimes I'll get a document that somebody returned to me, and it, we, we've got some revisions, and Lord bless their little heart, they didn't mark where the revisions are. So in that program, they got something called compare, and they will compare those two documents, and it'll mark all the things that are different than, than in that document. Praise God. What we need to do is we need to do a compare. Hey, God, here's my will. Now, I want to know what your will is and do a compare, and whatever my will doesn't match, I need to get rid of. Amen. Praise God. I may want to do this and do that and go here and go there, but what do they say? You need to ask first. If the Lord wills, you'll go here and do this and, and do that. Amen. What is your will, God, in my life? What is your plan for my life? Well, I just think you're just being... Jesus had a purpose when He came to this earth. And He prayed and He said, You know what, Lord? I, 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 I want... Uh, let this cup pass from me. That's what He's saying. Man, that cross, that's death. He's, he was man and God. And he did not cherish the fact that he was having to, go to have to go and be crucified like a thief and bear the sins of everybody. He says, if it's possible, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Amen. Praise God. If we do not pray this way, look, thy will, that's God's plan and purpose for your life. I align our will with His. Jesus had a purpose and He prayed. No pray. If we don't pray like this, if we don't pray your will be done, then our natural fleshly desires will dominate us. And we'll want what we want. In my psychology class, they said, look, babies, teenagers, and chronologically mature folks all have the same issue. They're egocentric. They think it's all about them. That baby wants that food now. He wants to be changed now. He wants somebody to pay attention to him now. Teenagers think it's all about them. How do I look? I got to have what I need to wear. I got to have what I... And, and when and chronolo chronologically mature folks, it's what they want. My grandma wanted her house, her car, at the time she wanted. Praise God. If we don't pray... Lord, let your will be done in my life. We will fall to those fleshly desires, those carnal desires. But if we do pray this way, then we're going to see victory. We're going to see victory through the tough times and the, and the seemingly unfair situations that confront all of us. Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I want victory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thy will be done in me. Let your will be done in me, God. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. This is where we bring our petitions before God, what our needs are. Now look, although we should, we should ask uh, <clears throat> uh, for things, we should also seek God's guidance and His will concerning what we consider needs rather than praying for them. Amen? Lord, I think I need this. Is, is this really what I need? Uh, I remember uh, years and years and years ago, I, was, I, I got to a place, I, I, I wanted something. I wanted something bad. Man, I even went to the store, told them to set it aside. I'm coming back for it. You know, I, 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 need, I need that. And, I, I, man, I got to church that Sunday, and uh, uh, I could Brother Young got up there to preach, and I couldn't sit still. That's all I could think about was that thing that I was going to go get. And, and I didn't pay attention to Brother Young at all. And finally, near the end of the service, boy, that still, small voice, you know, smacked me in the head with a two-by-four and said, Man, you know, this whole service, that's all you thought about is that thing. You don't need that thing. Look at how it consumed you. I called him up and told him to put it back on the shelf. I didn't need that. Praise God. And then sometimes, you know, we, uh, well, James puts it this way. You lust, now that word lust there means desire. You desire and you have not. You desire it, but you don't have it. You kill, that word kill is murder. Now, now James is talking about the wars. He's speaking to the country of Israel, the nation of Israel. 
And he's saying, now you, you know, you, you want stuff and, and you're, you're having these wars and you're going out there so that you can get more land and more, more possessions and, and, and raid these places. And he's, he's really chiding him. He says, you lust, you desire, and you have not. You murder and you desire to have, and yet you can't obtain it. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You don't pray. If you'd pray before you went to war... And if you prayed according to my will, I'd give you what you need. Isn't God something? If you'll just ask me, I'll give you what you need. Praise God. Next verse says, You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That word there means with the wrong intent. That you may consume it, waste it, upon your own lust, your own pleasure. So, you ask and receive not because you ask with the wrong intent that you may waste it with your own pleasure. My goodness. God just wants us to pray according to His will. That's why I love praying and praying in the Holy Ghost because I know the Spirit of God that's inside of me is going to ask the things of God, pray uh, and ask the things of God according to God's will. It, my will's out of it. Praise God. I want God's will. Amen? We need to move on. <clears throat> Verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, this is confession and re This is the quickest way to get to God is by confessing and repenting. You get God's attention when you, when you confess. You get God's attention when you repent. And you move God because God loves a repentant heart. He loves a repentant heart. That word debts means sin. Forgives us our sins as we forgive our debtors. That word means something else. That word means someone who has wronged you and not made it right yet. So if you've got somebody that's wronged you, you need to forgive them whether they made it right or not. Uh-oh, boy, I felt everybody pick their feet up because they didn't want me to step on their toes. Amen. In other words, we've got to forgive others. We've got to forgive others and not hold it against them. Hey, remember, God, look, God convicts you with a reason. You, you ought not be doing that. Why am I going here? Because sometimes we can get into this confession and repentance routine and some people get stuck there. They will confess and repent of the same thing for years. Well, let me tell you something. God is faithful. You confess and you repent and you don't do it again, it's gone. I, I, sometimes I'll do this with the young people. I, I, will, I will have somebody uh, that's uh, get an erasable board and it, it is full of sins. I just, just wrote, down, wrote down a bunch of sins up there. And I'll say, man, when you repent, you're baptized in Jesus' name, you receive the Holy Ghost, it's like an angel picks up an eraser and erases all that stuff. You know, some one scripture says it's as far as the west is from the east. Somebody said it's in the sea of forgetfulness. You know, God, the big thing is God is never going to bring them back to you and say, do you remember that time? No, it's under the blood. It's gone. Amen. When you know, Unless you do it again. Right? So God convicts us for a reason. This isn't, this is against my word. This is, you ought not do this. You ought not go there. You ought not say that. You ought not see this, etc., etc. No, not listen to this. But the devil, he is good at, at, at condemning you with guilt. And you know what I found when he does that? You can't figure out why you feel so bad. Why, why am I feeling so guilty? I didn't do it again. I've already repented of it, but this heavy weight of guilt is pressing me to the ground. That's the devil. That's called condemnation. If you ask the Lord to forgive you, guess what? He's faithful to forgive. And it's gone. The, they erased it off the whiteboard. It's gone. Stop confessing it over and over again. So there's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance. We, we, in repentance, there's a balance. And we must watch for that condemnation that makes us feel so bad. Some people get caught in that. And you know what? When you get caught in that, you can't move forward with your praying. And that's the whole idea. It's a trick of the devil to keep you from praying. 
you stay at repentance, you stay at, at asking forgiveness, and you just stay there, stay there, stay there, and you never get to the rest of praying. I've seen it happen, especially the young people, but we're all susceptible to it. Once God forgives you, it's done. Stop digging it up. Praise the Lord. Verse 12, 13. And lead us not into temptation. Now, this is, this is a strange one here, okay? I need to take you to a couple of scriptures. James chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. James chapter 1. Let no man say when he is tempted. Now, that word tempted means tempted to sin. When he is tempted to sin, I am tempted of God, or God's tempted me with sin. Don't say that, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God doesn't do that. He doesn't tempt us to sin. What kind of a God would that be? Right? <clears throat> Verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away. The word tempted, the phrase there, drawn away, means lured out, baited, baited out. I think of two things immediately. I, I, I think of fishing, throwing that little, that little spinner bait or that little uh, tube jig and that little frog and then popping it and bringing it in, popping it, bringing it in, popping it, bringing it in. That's luring that fish out. Get him to come out there and bite on that thing, right? Praise God. He says, you are lured out, you are baited. And I think of that big cage with that peanut butter and jelly sandwich in there. You know? That would get me in. Praise God. He says, uh, he is tempted to sin when he is drawn away, lured out and baited by what? His own lust. His own desires for what is forbidden. That's where sin comes from. Our own desires. Right? And enticed. By his own lust and enticed. You know that word enticed? It's got two or three word definitions, but the one that caught me was deceived. Deceived. That's just like that old devil. He's a liar. Deceiver. What, what does he say? Oh, nobody's going to know. It's going to be good for you. Hmm. God does not tempt us to sin. When, he, when that scripture says, lead us not into temptation, it means... Please, Lord, do not allow us to go into a temptation that we are not able to overcome. That we will not be overwhelmed. Don't let us fall into a trap that we're not able to overcome. But 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, the scripture there says, There hath no temptation, enticement to sin, no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted Above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, a way out, that ye may be able to bear it, endure. Look at it in the, in the uh, uh, Christian Standard Bible. No temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. You're not going through anything that anybody else doesn't go through. The devil will tell you, oh, you are so bad, that's just you. You're the only one. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Oh, man, it's common. This temptation is common. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to stand, to get through, right? But with the temptation, He will also provide the way out so that you may be able to bear it or endure it. Now, a lot of people will use this and say, oh, God's not going to put anything on me more than I can bear any type of situation in life. You got it part right. It's about sin, though. It's about temptation. It's not about, oh, God will never never let me be persecuted beyond what I'm able to No, no, no. It's about sin. It's about temptation. Thank God He's not going to put anything more on us. And with every temptation, there's a way out. The problem is, we got to take the way out. We've got to, it's like traveling down the interstate. Man, I want me some, some, uh, uh, I want me some uh, 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 breakfast. Donuts? Donuts? No. Cracker Barrel. I want me some Cracker Barrel. Man, I'm on the interstate. I don't care what other sign is up there. The only ones I look for is Cracker Barrel. 
Well, now in diesel if we're pulling the fifth whip. Uh, Cracker Barrel. And man, but you know what? If I say, oh, there's Cracker Barrel. Woo! Exit number seven. And I get up there. You know, seven, that's God's number. <laughs> Not to get off the Cracker Barrel. You know, and if I just pass by it, I ain't getting breakfast. It's the same thing here. God will open that door and say, you, you know, in, in, in England, instead of those, you know how we have an exit sign? You know what it is in England? Way out. Back in the 70s, we loved it. Way out. <laughs> it said way out. Right? And, 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 and here it is. We're, we're on the interstate, and the Lord's standing there saying, way out. Here's the way out. And we just drive on by. Huh? What? Or I'm enjoying my temptation. I don't feel like taking the exit. That happens too, doesn't it? The honest people said yes. Praise God. So lead us not into today. God, don't put us in a situation that it's, it's going to overwhelm us from a temptation standpoint. And thank you, God, for making a way out with every temptation that comes our way. Verse 13, the rest of it says, uh, but deliver us from evil. Uh, a lot of commentators say, eh, wrong word, wrong word. It says, uh, but deliver us from the... Whoa, get back up here. Where are you going? Deliver us from the wicked one. Deliver us from the devil. Deliver us from the tempter. Remember, it's all about sin, right? The tempter. And I love this part. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Woo! The kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus in this teaching tells the disciples, this is what I want you to pray about. These are the topics I want you to cover. These are the topics I want you to cover. So if we desire God's power and His anointing flowing out of our lives, then we have to pray like His disciples, like He taught His disciples to pray. If we want God to use us to bring souls into the kingdom which achieves His plan, then we've got to pray like they pray. Well, how did they pray? And I'll be brief. How did they pray? Well, how do, how do we pray? We pray with repentance. Folks, prayer ought to always start with repentance. I would, I would rather repent before I even start praising God. I just I just want to make everything clear, clean, get it out of the way, pray with repentance. Next, the disciples pray with persistence. That word means means determination, resolve, diligence. I don't care if you have, if I haven't had an answer in 20 years, I am still going to pray about this situation. Amen. Praise God. Ian e. Bounds said, Much time spent with God is the secret to all successful praying. How dare we? No, I'm going to change that. How dare I say, spend only an hour a day in prayer and blame God for not getting answers? Sorry. I didn't say your hour had to be contiguous, right? We can have. Continual prayer, right? And pray more than an hour a day. 15 minutes here, half an hour there, 45 minutes here, 10 minutes there. If I do that all day long, I'll pray more than an hour a day. But how dare I blame God when I don't spend much time with Him? Well, what if we did that here? The only time I came up to Brother Whittington was... Uh, uh, when I needed something, and then I, I only spent a few minutes with him long enough for me to ask him and then get out of the way. Boy, that's a friendship, isn't it? Remember, when we don't hear from God, delay is just often, often, it's a test of the strength of our faith. The strength of our faith. That brings me to number three. They prayed their prayers mixed with faith. I thought of these two verses today while I was studying. And that was Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. You know what? 
our prayers not being mixed with faith are unprofitable. We've got to mix some faith with our prayers. Amen. I, I, I saw a YouTube recently where a guy, you know, he was trying to, uh, in England, was trying to make a cake. And uh, so he, he, got the, he got the cake mix and he, he, he got the egg and whatever else he was told to put in it. Then he dumped it in a pan and he threw it in the oven and he baked it. Well, he didn't mix it. He didn't mix it. That's how our prayers are when we don't mix in faith. Praise God. And also this verse, uh, James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So, so here we need to ask God in faith. I know it's not talking about praying. But it is asking God. But specifically for wisdom here. But when we ask God, we've got to go in faith. You know, Our kids come up to us and say, Woo, daddy, 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 give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. Well, back in our day, it was 10 or $15. You know, they, they had no doubt that we were going to be able to supply their need. And they came asking for it. You know? And come in. Well, I don't know if you can do this or not. I need 50 cents to go to the movie. Oh, wait. That was me in Germany when I was a kid. Okay. Praise God. But we got to mix it with faith. Why? Faith creates powerful praying. Remember, the only two instances where prayer... Uh, was able to pull the Lord off of his timetable was the Sumerian woman with the daughter that had the devil and the centurion who, who said, Lord, you don't even need to come to my house. Just say it. They both had great faith. Great faith. Faith creates powerful praying. Faith focuses, faith focuses on Christ's ability to do greatly. Hey, there is nothing my God can't do. There is nothing my God hasn't done. Even in my life, if I just talked about, spent some time to, to enumerate the things that God has done in my life, He's done some great things. Amen. Praise God. We've got to remember that doubt and fear are the twin enemies of faith. Whenever we see doubt and fear, we need to run them off. We need to run them off. Faith comes where? It, faith grows by reading and meditating on God's Word. What do I mean by that? Don't sit there and try to cram in 5, 10, 15 chapters. You know, and, oh, I got an hour before bedtime. Uh, uh, so, okay, judge not lest ye be... Man, come on. Pick out some verses that mean something, that, that you want to know. Uh, judge not lest ye be judged, for with judgment you judge... Oh, and then meditate on it. Think about it. What does that mean to me today? How can I apply that in my life right now? Well, you didn't get to the rest of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the 29 verses in that chapter. But I'd rather read and meditate and get something out of two or three verses than just put a check in the box and said I read 29. Most and best of all, faith thrives in an atmosphere of prayer. That's why I love corporate prayer meetings. Man, when we come together, when I hear y'all praying, when I hear this one getting excited in tongues, when I hear this one in that spirit of prayer, and you know that they're reaching the heavenly throne, worship going on over here. You know, it doesn't all have to be loud, but you know what? When people are praying out loud and tongues is going on and worship is going on and somebody's reading the word out loud, that's the atmosphere of prayer. And faith thrives in that atmosphere. We've all been in the prayer room when somebody got on fire. It seems to ignite all the rest of us. Prayer thrives in an atmosphere. Faith thrives in an atmosphere of prayer. And they also prayed... They also prayed with much prayer. Much prayer. I, I, I'm thinking of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. That doesn't mean be careful. That means don't be filled with care. Don't be bothered. Don't be anxious for anything. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything... 
by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Praise God. That's what we're supposed to be doing. No matter what we're going through during the day. No matter what's happening to us during the day. We ought to have a praise on our lips for God being so good or a praise in our mind and our hearts. We ought to have, if something comes up, we get bad news in the mail, we get a bad phone call, we, 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 we're feeling bad, uh, we got something going on with family, we ought to be able to go to God in everything, bring it to Him in prayer. Bring it to Him in prayer. Bring it to Him in prayer. Praise God. Why? My worrying ain't going to fix it. That's right. Scripture says I can't add one inch to my stature by worrying. My height by worrying. By what? By worrying. Did I say it wrong? Is it right? I, it's right. Okay, good. You scare me here. I'm not sure what, what's happening here. Sorry, folks. I can't add anything to myself by worrying. I can't fix anything by worrying. I can't, you know, I can build as many what-if scenarios uh, around what's going on in my life than, than Carter has liver pills. But it's not going to fix the situation. The only thing that's going to fix the situation is if I take it to God in prayer. Praise God. This type of praying brought power. The power of God. We call it the anointing. This type of praying brought the anointing to the ministry of the disciples. Praise God. And people were converted and lives were changed and miracles were experienced and the kingdom of God was advanced. Praise the Lord. Biblical praying. It is a pathway to God's Anybody looking for God's power tonight? Let's lift our hands and pray.